All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I know I know you all are alive because my wife just said good morning. Anybody else going to say good morning? All right. I'll I'll trust that you're alive, and I'm not just speaking to people that are not <laughs> animated or moving. So today, today I want to go through, I want to, you might want to turn me down a little bit. I seem really hot up here, like it's about to ring. Thank you. Um, the title this morning is Getting Through the Difficult Seasons in Our Lives. And uh, this is a big one. This is a big one. Because somehow, some way along the history of the church or whatever it is, whether it's, it's just a modern concept, we have this understanding that if we give our lives to Jesus, everything's going to be perfect and unicorns and fuzzy, fuzzy chairs and everything's going to be wonderful. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Okay? Now, it doesn't mean that our lives are full of misery. That's the, also the opposite teaching that's also prevalent that now we have to suffer all the time and we have to be miserable all the time because we're nothing but a low little worm that needs to be pounded into the ground. And that's also a lie. That is not what God called you to be. That is not what God called any of us to be. Okay? But we have to understand a couple of things. First off, we're broken people. Every one of us is broken. And the reason we're broken is not even our fault. Okay? It goes way, way back. Okay? We've been told the story of Adam and Eve. The reality is, is that our sinful nature, our flesh, okay, is the reason we're broken. Why did God allow us to continue on? It's, it's his plan, not mine. Okay? But when the fall happened, he allowed us to continue it on. But every single one of us, including Adam and Eve, needs a savior. There's got to be a way that we can reconnect to God, and the only way is through Jesus Christ. That's exactly what God's word says. That is exactly what, what the truth is, is that the only way to the Father to be reconnected with God is back through Jesus. Okay? He's the one that paid the price because the reality is is that in ourselves, the way we are right now, and I realize this is a heavy teaching. I realize it's really rough. Okay? But bear with me. There's, there's good news. Okay? But the reality is, is that not a single one of us deserves anything else other than death. And the reason I say that is not because I think everyone should die. It's because of the fact that God's word basically says the flesh is useless. It's complete enmity against God. There's not a single thing in our flesh that wants God because the reality is, is that we love the feel goods, but we don't want to pay the prices. We want to do whatever we want to do regardless of what is right or good according to God's word. Okay? The only way to heaven, the only way to, to the Father, the only way back is through the one bridge that God made, which is through Jesus Christ. Okay. Moving on. Now, we all experience suffering in our life. Every one of us. Man was made for it. You're like, what? Yeah, man was made for suffering. Job 5, 6 through 8 says, For affliction does not come from the dust, nor does trouble spring from the ground. In other words, it's not, it's not just planted there and it just grows. That's not how it works. Yet, man is born for, to trouble as the sparks fly upwards. You ever seen a fire? You've seen the little sparks at the end of the flames, you know, the little things going up in the air. That doesn't mean we're in, in constant suffering, but it does mean that just like things are a result of fire, man was born into suffering. But as for me, I would seek God, and to God would I commit my cause. Now, this, this particular scripture was one of Job's friends telling him about how he thought Job did wrong and caused all these sufferings to come upon himself. But that's not the truth. But it's what his perspective was. Hey, if you do right, you're not going to suffer. So if you're suffering, you must have done wrong. Also not true. There's other examples. Job, Job lost a lot. He lost everything. He lost land. He lost finances. He lost it all. Go read the whole book. It, it, it's amazing how much he suffered and how much he lost, but how much God restored. 
He lost family. He lost lands. He lost livestock. Everything. Why? Because Job did something wrong? No. Because God is sovereign. And God had a purpose for all of this. Other examples like David and King Saul. Okay? When David was, before David was anointed king, or actually after he was anointed, but he wasn't yet king, he was, he was just a young teen, uh, Saul kept him in his presence, all right? Because he, he had favor with Saul. But then Saul turned against God and did his own thing, so God sent an evil spirit. He sent the spirit to trouble Saul. What? L- listen to that again. God sent a spirit to trouble Saul. Well, I thought the devil's the only one who troubles us. The devil's a pawn. He was created. He's working for God. In other words, I'm not going to say he doesn't exist because he does exist. I'm not going to say that demons don't exist because they do exist. Okay? When you're outside of Christ, when you're outside of God, when you've never accepted Christ, they have reign in your life. Whether you like to hear it or not, it's the truth. But once you give yourself to Jesus, their authority is over. And now it's God that's in control. Therefore, the only reason they have anything in there is either because you're not following what God told you to do, haven't been set free from it yet, or they're working for God's purpose in your life. What does that mean? To grow you up. It's like working out. If you don't lift weights, you're not going to build the muscles, right? Do you know anybody who just walked in the next day and said, oh, look, I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger, just miraculously? No, they work out. So in the same way, God grows you up by putting calamity or allowing calamity and and destruction and disaster and things in your life. He doesn't necessarily destroy you. His goal is not to wipe you out. Okay, He's not there to crush you. But he is going to grow you up which means that you're going to, in order for you to become a son or daughter of God, you've got to go through stuff. Because otherwise, we're not going to change. We're just going to stay the way we are. Okay? Paul. Well, any, anyway, when, when, when Saul would uh, uh, have the evil spirit, then David would play on his harp, and Saul would be comforted. If David was nowhere to be around, Saul was miserable. Okay? Whole nother sermon. Paul's many. Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Tell me one time Paul didn't suffer. He suffered greatly for Christ. And and although he was the Pharisee of Pharisees, I mean he was the top ranking guy. He said everything I know I count it as dung. It doesn't means nothing from knowing him. But he also suffered at the hands of man. Three times Paul even prayed to God about a particular thing, and God said, my grace is sufficient for you. He didn't deliver him from it. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, he made Paul completely dependent on God. And that's exactly what God wants us to do, to be fully dependent on him. It's the only way that we become and do what he wants us to do. Otherwise, we're running in our own strengths. Jesus and the cross. You think Jesus wanted to go to the cross? Now let's think about this. Jesus is the Son of God. He is fully God. But he was also made fully man. What a what a enigma knowing that you're God and that you're also a man. And that you could use your your authority and everything you have to completely end everything right now, and you chose not to. Wow, I, I can't even imagine that. I mean, because if I was, <laughs> if I had that capability, I would. I know I would probably not do the right thing. Okay, especially in some of the traffic situations I've been in. Okay, but the thing is, is he did. He went to the cross. He even said to the Father, "If this can pass, if this cup can pass, please let it do so. But nevertheless, your will be done, not mine." If you knew you were going to die tomorrow. And a horrible death at that? Could you say, you know what, Lord, if I can get past this, great, but if not, your will be done. Ooh, I'd be begging. <laughs> Are you sure this is the way we need to go? You know, I mean, it's tough.
like I said, we are all broken in need of repair. That's why Jesus came. Our brokenness in part is due to sin and, and or the sin nature. But the price for freedom is the losing of ourselves. But there's a problem. There's a problem. We tend to hold on to ourselves, our old selves, thinking that there's nothing better. <laughs> right? I already know it. I already got it. No, you don't. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> okay? It's the truth. I want to share a story with you. Uh, my wife shared this with me, and, and it was just very apropos to this. So, there's this little girl that um, <clears throat> wanted a little set of pearls, some plastic pearls, right? It was like $3 or something like that. And she said, Mom, can I have these pearls? And she said, well, sure, but you have to pay for them. You have to earn it. You have to do this and this and this and this and this, and I'll pay you for it. So she did. She did all of the things. She paid for it. She worked hard. She got the money. She bought the pearls. And she loved those plastic pearls. But eventually, over time, or they were cheap pearls, whatever, apparently over time, they started to turn her neck green. Now, she would not go anywhere without these pearls. She loved those pearls. Okay, those were her pearls. But over time, turned her neck green. So her dad comes in one night and says, do you love me? And she says, yes, Daddy, I love you. He says, well, give me the pearls. And she didn't want to give him the pearls. So he let it go. And the next day, she, he comes in, says, give me the pearls. If you love me, give me the pearls. And she's crying at this point because she earned those pearls. She worked hard for those pearls. She says, well, can you take my teddy bear? She says, no, I just want the pearls. I can't give you the pearls. So he said, okay. And he left. Third night he comes in again, and she's crying, and she just hands him the pearls. She goes, here, Daddy, you can have the pearls. And he exchanged those pearls for real pearls. It was a much better exchange. But she didn't know it. She didn't know it. But in his mercy and compassion, he gave her a great gift. But she didn't know it was coming. But she had to let go of the fake in order to get the real. And that's where I'm at with this. How much of me am I willing to give up? How much of me am I willing to sacrifice to know Him. Can we honestly say, I'm willing to give everything? Can we honestly say, like the, the musician said this morning, all I want is you. All I want is you. Are you willing to give it up? Are you willing to give up your businesses, your livelihood, your family, your children? What if it costs you everything? And you're alone. Are you willing to pay that price just so that you honor and know him? I'm not saying you're going to. I'm just asking if you would. And that's, that's hard. I went through a thing this week. It was tough. And it was tough because I realized that recently in the past year or so, I paid a heavy, heavy price to follow God. Even to the point now where I don't have certain fellowship in my life. I've lost friends in my life. Okay? It costs me money. Is it my fault? No. Is it their fault? No. It's the price I had to pay because I wanted to move on. And I am I happy to pay it? Not really. Just being honest. I'm not really happy of having to pay that price because it cost me dearly. But the end result is he's never left me, never forsaken me. And I know him more now than I knew him then. Is it worth it? That's kind of a silly question, isn't it? Is it worth it? Because the God of this universe wants us to go to him. And he was willing to give everything that he had that was of any value, which was Jesus Christ, his son for us. And if that's the case, what is there that we should hold back to know him? Because 
I could never give a human, another human as a sacrifice to him. Nor did he ever ask for that. But that's exactly what he did for us. He paid the ultimate price. He sent his son, the only one that could be righteous, the only one that, would, that could, could pay that price so that we could have fellowship with him. That's pretty amazing. It's a high price. It's not one we should take lightly. That's why I think, I think it's important that your church understands that this is not about a social club. This is not about going and hearing a bunch of music and hanging out with your buddies. It's not about eating together and doing good deeds together and maybe helping an old lady once a year, whatever it is. That's not what this is about. What this is about is, is a sacrifice of your heart. Are you willing to give your heart over to the God of this universe so that you can know him, which is what his desire is? And it's not easy. I get it. And that's what the church needs to understand. This is not a walk. This is not a weakness walk. This takes everything that you are. This takes everything that we are in order to walk it. And God looks at that, and and in comparison to what he's done, it's nothing. But it's everything. Does that make sense? It's nothing compared to God, but it's everything because it's our choice to let him do it. It's our choice to make that sacrifice or not make that sacrifice. It's all up to us. He never forces us. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have situations that occur in our lives if we're following him, okay, or choices to make. It says, every day I put before you life and death. I would that you choose life. You can still choose death. It's up to you. You can follow or not follow. You can choose him or choose you. That's every single day, and that's every single one of us. It's all up to us. And it's high time that we stop playing around with the the notion that, oh, you know, yeah, okay, I, I'll go today, I won't go tomorrow, I'm going to go fishing, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. It, it, it's, it's not about all the different things. There's time for all of those things. Sometimes God tells you, take a break, don't feel guilty. That's not what I mean. I mean, it's a matter of whether we're going to choose him or choose us every single day. So when trouble arises, and it will, what's your response? Fear? Anger? Or trust? I'd love to say it's always trust. (laughs) Sometimes it's a combination of all of it. Okay? It's a choice. Uh, again, I, I realize this is not an easy, easy thing to talk about, but it's very relevant. I want to share this too before I tell you a couple other things. James 1, 2 through 4 says, My brother encounters all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Okay? The only way that we grow is to let the work happen. What does that mean? It means that when you go through stuff, you don't fall back and say, this is not worth it, I hate this, I hate you, God, I run away, blah, blah, blah. It means, Lord, I'm struggling, this hurts, but I trust you. You see what I'm saying? It's go to him. It's go to him. That's how you get through this. That's how I got through all my stuff, is you go to him. Everything is go to him. Everything is go to Him. You mean pray? Absolutely pray. Pray a lot. Okay? Get with people who will pray with you. Get with people who will strengthen you. Not the people who will tear you down. Not the people who will scoff at you or say, oh, we are, you know, try and uh, 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 devaluate your emotions or whatever it is. Remember, I I talked about another sermon a while ago about how how to rightly deal with your emotions, okay? Trust me, when you're going through stuff, you're going through some emotional stuff. Okay? Emotions aren't wrong. There's no such thing as wrong emotions. There is such thing as wrong reactions. Okay? But the point I'm trying to make is is that he's there. He loves us. The Holy Spirit was given to us to comfort us. And if you look that up, it's not just a, oh, I'm so sorry you're going through this. Okay? 
It's to lead us and guide us and grow us up and to work through us and to all the things. He's, he's literally our connection. The Holy Spirit is our connection to the Father through the Son. And because of Jesus, what he paid on the cross is the reason why we have the opportunity to fellowship. When you hear God's voice, it's the Holy Spirit. When he gives you an answer to prayer, it's the Holy Spirit. When, when you have that inkling that goes, mm, something's not right here, that's the Holy Spirit. When you, when you cast out a demon, it's the name and authority of Jesus. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Resurrection, power of the Holy Spirit. Healing somebody, power of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. That kind of fellowship is what he desires from us. That's what he wants. That's why he gave us his spirit. That price was paid so that we would be reconnected. And yeah, you're going to go through some things. Is there a single person here or on the internet that's never gone through something? And if you raised your hand, you're lying. Because everybody goes through stuff. Everybody goes through stuff. Okay? Even Pastor Howard. I'm just saying. Okay? But if we, if, we, if we run away or if we hide it, okay, all of those things, that's not what God wants. What he wants is for us to go to him. Go to him in prayer. Seek after him. Seek counsel. Whatever it is, go to him. Because what he wants to do, literally, you're saying, well, he wants to crush me. Yeah, he does. Okay, like I said before in the very beginning, okay, we're not good for anything other than death in ourselves. But if he can, if he can take us and crush us and or, or, or get us to a position where we can be broken, he can put us back together differently the way he wants to so that we then represent and reflect what he wants us to be. You see what I'm saying? That's different. It's scary. It is scary. It's frightening because you're thinking, well, I like the way I am. The way you are is not great. And I'm not saying that because I think you're terrible. I'm saying that because according to God's word, unless you are wholly given over to him, you're not ready. You just don't know any different. Okay? We get used to who we are. We enjoy who we are. Hey, I love going to see movies. I love doing this. I'm not a bad person, blah, blah, blah. Those are the, th you know, fine. You love go going to movies. That's great. What about the content you're letting in your eyes? Oh, I love all this kind of stuff. Well, you know, is it wholesome? Is it going to bring you? And I'm, I'm, please don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to condemn anybody for their movie habits, okay? But what I'm saying is that is, is everything that we consume really what we need to be consuming? Is what everything that we're involved in really everything we need to be involved in? And if you look at it according to God's word, there's a big conflict, at least in my life, between what God says is right and good and what I enjoy. <laughs> I'll just be honest, okay? But I also know that every time that I go through something, a little bit more of me changes. And suddenly, all the things I used to like, I don't necessarily like anymore. And it wasn't that I changed it, it's that he changed it. And should I be upset about the fact that he changed it? No, because I find that I don't find that have the same joy in the things that I used to have joy in. Okay? And it's not that I'm a fuddy-duddy. I'm actually pretty fun to hang, hang around, you know? And my wife is kind of like, eh. Okay? But the point is this. <clears throat> the point is this. In ourselves, we're not done. We are very undone. We are very broken. Okay? We are going to go through stuff. Okay? There's going to be times where you're on the mountain, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't think I can get any closer to God. And you're, you're so excited and you're so happy for it and the Lord is moving in your life and you're blessed. I mean, it seems like you can do no wrong and that's awesome. I love those times. But there's also other times. And those other times which are, okay, now that we've had that, I'm going to bring you over here so that we can correct this issue or this thing in your life that you don't even know that you have <laughs> so that you can be more like my son and, and experience me in a deeper, greater sense. Okay? Amen. Father, we thank you for this message. I pray, Lord, that um, anything that was, was not of you would just not even be remembered. But, Lord, I, all these things that I know to be true, I pray, Lord, that you would touch our hearts. Help us to get through those times. Bring us to the point where we rely on you for all things, good or otherwise. When we're going through difficult times, that we sense your presence and that we know that you're guiding us. Not just because we're told you're guiding us, because we've experienced that you're guiding us. 
Help us to trust you. Change our hearts so that we trust you in all things, even when things are difficult. Amen.